First Chronicles chapter 18. Now after this, it came to pass. David wanted to build the temple. He couldn't build the temple. God's going to bless his family. David smoked the Philistines and subdued them and took Gath and her towns out of the hand of Philistines. That's down by um, uh, the southwest near the Mediterranean area. He smoked Moab, that's on the other side of the Jordan River. And the Moab, Moabites became David's servants and brought gifts. You know, trying to please David. Please don't kill us all. And they weren't to kill the Moabites all. They're the children of Lot. They're not in the land of, Cal uh, of Cana. And David smoked Hadarezer, king of Zobah, unto Hamath. As he went to establish his dominion by the river Euphrates. Now look at that. Look where David is. David has reached the land of Israel all the way up to the river Euphrates. But he lost a lot of land due to sin. That's up by the that's up where Iraq and Iran, Babylon. David's on his way up there gathering land in victory. And David took from him, had a reason, a thousand chariots, 7,000 horsemen, and 20,000 footmen. David also hawked all the chariot horses. That would be to cut the tendons to disable those horses. But reserve of them, the horses, a hundred chariots. So David kept some of the chariots. Some of the horses he hawked, he destroyed. He's killing and taking prey of the men as he's going on with victory. And when the Syrians, uh, that's today's news, of Damascus, that's where Paul was going, came to help Hadarezer. <laughs> the guy's so much trouble, he needs help. David is so conquering. Came to help Hadarezer, king of Zobah. David slew all the Syrians, two and twenty thousand men. So here comes the Syrians. They're coming to help against the enemies of Israel, and David's kicking their butt. This is a man that loves God with all his heart, and God is blessing him. Victories upon victories. And David put garrison. That's military troops, supplies, weapons, uh, supplies in cities. Uh, we would almost call that as like a National Guard depots. You know, it's just a stockpile. In case you're ever going to do a battle out in that area, well, the weaponry is there, ready to be used. In Syria, Damascus. And the Syrians became David's servants. So David overpowered the Syrians. The Syrians seem to be overpowering all the world today. Became David's servants and brought gifts to please David. Make him happy. Thus the Lord preserved David. Thus the Lord preserved David. Not David and his men. Not David and his arrows. Not David and his horses. Not David with his rocks. The Lord. It wasn't the Lord that brought Goliath down before David. It wasn't that rock. It was God guiding that rock. David came to that giant and said, In the name of the Lord, poof. And when David went over and cut off that, that, that head of Goliath. I looked down and said, wow, God, that's a good shot. David would not have said that. I believe David would have said that. I believe David gave God all that credit. Wow, God, with one rock, right in the right place, this guy's dead. David gives God the credit. So what do you do when, when you've got a religion? Oh, we're not to go to battle. We're not to fight. We're not to join the military. You know, because God says thou shalt not kill. What do you do there? Evidently, there's a difference between wartime and there's a difference between in your heart you want someone dead. You plan out. Murder in the Bible is you plan something out. An army, weaponry, war is devised by a government, not the individual. The guy that's holding that rifle on the, on the range or in, the, uh, 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 in battle, 
He had no. He doesn't have a hatred for that other guy over there. He's just trying to survive. He's trying to win. He's trying to give his country victory. But if you get a gun, a rifle, a gun, and your purpose is you're going to kill somebody, the main objective of having that gun is so I can kill somebody without a war, then you're a murderer. And you don't even have to pull that trigger. There's a difference between war and murder. And God stands up for the children of Israel when it comes to war. And if an Israelite, God's chosen people, God's particular people, if an Israelite murders somebody, God says, hey, that guy's got to go. he got to die. Capital punishment. And David took the shields of gold that were on the servants of Hadarezer and brought them to Jerusalem. Now, look at these guys. they got gold and shields. I've been told gold's a soft material. But there they are. I mean, that gold glistens off the shields from the sun. You're a stupid target. That gold shines. Likewise, from Tibhath and from Chun, cities of Hadrezer, this is a man mentioned in uh, verse 3, brought David very much brass. Wherewith Solomon made the brazen sea and the pillars and the vessels of brass. Now look at chapter 17, God told David you can't build it. But God did not tell David you can't supply for Solomon. And what David's gathering up right now, he's but he's gathering a stockhold, he's gathering a garrison, he's gathering materials. David's supplying all of the needs that Solomon will have in that temple that you can see. Though David didn't build it, and right here we read that brazen sea and those pillars that Solomon names one Boaz and the other one Jacob. My father David supplied that brass in battle. So David does have a part in building that temple. Not the physically bang, bang, bang the hammers, which there were no hammers. He just has a supply of the raw material. Now when two king of Hamath heard how David had smitten all the hosts of Hadrezer, king of Zoba, he sent Hadram, his son, here's the king's son, to King David to inquire of his welfare. <clears throat> That's a bad name. Welfare. How you doing, Dave? Need anything? That was a great battle. Anything get you? And to congratulate, that's the only time that word shows up in the Bible. Congratulations! That's the only first time. And it's to David. Imagine all the world that remains in the millennium after the second advent, after the judgment of the goats and, and sheep made. Imagine all those that will come up to congratulate Jesus Christ for the great things he's doing. Imagine that. Imagine the day after where judge and the smoke clears away and where there be gold, silver, precious stones or just ashes. Imagine that time we will congratulate Jesus Christ for all that he's done for us. David's a type of Jesus Christ. Because, so, because David's done war, he's done battle. This one king says, hey, you, you're fighting against my enemy. Son, yes, Dad, I want you to go see King David. I want you to thank him. I want you to see if he needs anything because he's got rid of one of our enemies. Because he has fought against Hadadezer and smitten him. Parentheses, a port and note. For Hadadezer had been war with two, we're told, however you want to pronounce it. So not only did David conquer this Hadadezer for himself in Israel, but also for Toh. And with him, all manner of vessels of gold and silver and brass. I just want to thank you, David. Here's gold, silver, and brass. And those will go in the temple to build the temple, if not other things. Then also King David de dedicated unto the Lord. This is the Lord. This is what David says, God, this is yours. With the silver and the gold that he brought from all these nations from Edom, that's Esau, from Moab, that's Lot's family, and from the children of Ammon, Lot's family, and from the Philistines, the enemies of God, and from Elimelech, 
That's the one that's the enemy of God. That's the one that God told King Saul, you better wipe them all out. And evidently he didn't. Because there they are right there. These the Elimelech came up behind on the backside of Israel as they traveled the wilderness and started popping off the ones in the back. You know, the, the, the ones who were weak, the ones that couldn't keep up. He was killing them. And they devised a war. And Joshua fought. Moreover, Abishai, the son of Zariah, uh-oh, that's Abishai, there's Zariah's son, slew the Edomites in the Valley of Saul, 18,000. He put garrisons in Edom. And this is important. All the Edomites became David's servants. Thus the Lord preserved David whithersoever he went. Now let's run over to Genesis 27 about David and these men and Esau. Genesis 27. I think you remember this little deer meat, venison, goat meat. And Genesis 27, verse 29. And this is Jacob, I mean, excuse me, this is Isaac blessing Jacob, verse 29. Let people serve thee. Let nations bow down to thee. Be Lord over thy brethren, Esau, and let thy mother's sons, Esau, bow down to thee. Curse be everyone that curseth thee. There's, there's Abraham. And blessed be he that blesseth thee. And it came to pass soon as Isaac had made an end of, of blessing Jacob. Jacob was scarce going out of the presence of Isaac his father, and Esau the brother came in from his, from his hunting. And verse 37, Isaac's talking to Esau, who's come in late. And Isaac answered, said to Esau, Behold, I have made him, Jacob, thy Lord. And all his brethren have I given unto him for servants. And with corn and wine have I sustained him. What shall I do unto thee, my son? So that blessing that comes upon Jacob and not Esau, you're going to be in charge, uh, Jacob, over Esau. Here it is. It's First Chronicles 18, 13. Here's that. Hey, Esau, Edom, they're the same. Was that pottage really good? Because this could be the story of you right now. You could be the line of Jesus Christ, but oh, you were just so hungry. Now, what, what Jacob did to Isaac was wrong. What Rebekah did to Jacob was, I mean, Isaac and Jacob was wrong. But Esau sold out that birthright, and here it is. Verse 14, 1 Chronicles. So David reigned over all Israel. Not north, not south, all Israel. And executed judgment. Ooh. He put justice in the land of Israel. When, and it's hard to say with Jacob, but when a murderer was charged with murder, found guilty, he didn't put him in the, in the cities of refuge. He had him executed. Except for when his own personal sin and Joab. People in violation of law. One point David said that, that man stole the sheep. Four sheep for that one sheep. That's justice. That's judgment according to the law. David knew the law. I'm going to say it has not been recorded, but I'm going to say that David copied the law like the law prescribed a king to do. Because he knew it. And Joab, the son of Zariah, that's David's mother's sister, was over the host, the military. Jehoshaphat, the son of Ahadlu, the recorder, probably what we're reading right now. This would be the one David calling uh, Jehoshaphat? Yes, sir. Come in. I want this written down. Write this all down. Write down the business we're doing right now. Okay. That's what, that's what the recorder would do. Zadok, the son of Ahadlu, and Abimelech, the son of Abiathar, were the priests. Abimelech would be the high priest. That's the high priest, Abimelech. Zadok under him. There's two priests. High priest and the, the one that's under the high priest. 
as you find in the Gospels. And Shevacha was the scribe. He's in charge of the Word of God. Now, Jehoshaphat may have recorded what we're reading, and Shevacha may have been make sure the account is correct before we put it in the scrolls. And Beniah, we find his name, the son of Jehoiada, was over the Cherenites and the Perlites. So here's these group of people. Benaiah, yes, you're in charge of those men. Those men right there, specifically those men. And the sons of David were chief about the king. So David had many sons. They were, in, they were the princes. They were in charge of David's household. That's how Absalom got in control. That's how one of the sons tried to usurp the authority of the government when it should have been Solomon's. Because they're the chief. They know the right people. They have the right offices. 